so good morning everyone welcome to the lecture welcome to another lecture in the series of immunology so let me put on the slide show mode slide show yeah so today we'll be taking ahead the lecture uh, from the from the last lecture we'll be taking ahead the topic of overview of the beginners in today's lecture we'll be talking about the remaining portion of your uh, immune system that we had we had started discussing so today we will be focusing on studying different different aspects of your cell types like monocytes phagocytes and uh, natural killer cells and remaining portion of your immune system and also we'll be looking to cover your inflammation part in this particular lecture so let us begin with the first type of cell that is monocyte see in last lecture i narrated clearly that if you are talking about white blood cells in those white blood cells there are two types of lineages that we talk about granulocytes and a granulocytes in a granulocytes we were talking about lymphocytes and monocytes now what are monocytes they formulate around about 5% of the total wbcs white blood cells now although we had a very brief narration regarding the monocyte in that particular scenario but let us discuss what is monocyte see this is a monocyte this will be circulating in the blood the moment this monocyte reaches a specific tissue it is differentiated and now it is called as phagocytic cells and that phagocytic cell it is called as macrophage so the monocytes that are present in the blood will reach to a tissue and then it will called macrophage so that is the difference between monocytes and macrophages in fact monocytes are the precursor of macrophages and macrophages are are the first line comes under the first line of defense of innate immunity and spe specifically these macrophages also are responsible for presenting the antigen to activate cell mediated immunity that's why this is this is also called as antigen presenting cell apc antigen presenting cell so what is happening the mono suppose the monocyte is via uh, blood is reaching to the liver then what will happen in the liver in liver it is called as kupfer cell the liver macrophages are called as kupfer cells if it is reaching the lungs then we are calling it as alveolar macrophage or it's reaching the intestine then we are, we are calling it as interstinal macrophage so depending upon the tissue the nomenclature is given but the cell is actually a macrophage which is responsible for phagocytosis what we discussed in the last lecture so that is about monocyte which is differentiating into macrophage so what are macrophages their single most job is to eat up eat up the eat up the antigen eat up the infected cell so what they will be doing they will be phagocytosing the microbes which are present in the tissue now please have a clear cut understanding at this very point if we are talking about the phagocytic cell in blood then there are only neutrophils which can cause which which performs phagocytic function but when we are talking about phagocytic cells in tissues organs tissues then we are calling talking about macrophages so please have a very clear cut understanding that phagocytosis is there neutrophils will be responsible for phagocytosis in blood and macrophages are responsible for phagocytosis in tissue and apart from this both of them are responsible for presenting the antigen although macrophage is a classical type of antigen presenting cells so what are antigen presenting cells what do you mean by presenting an antigen that we'll discuss in the subsequent lectures but for now just to give you a brief that this is a cell which will present the antigen on the surface for any t cell to recognize and then activates the cell mediated immune response then another type is natural killer cells see the name itself is saying what natural natural killer that means they are involved in killing the cell right so what what are these cells they are, they are the part of innate immune response they will recognize an infected cell that is the main part see these cells will kill selectively the infected cells selectively the infected cells and what type of cells they they will kill the t cells so that's why they are called as natural killer t cells so they will recognize whether the t cell is infected or not if the t cell is infected i have to kill it whether the t cell is infected by a virus then i have to kill the cell i have to completely kill the cell so that virus will not get any host to replicate or any bacteria which is infecting the cell is the responsibility of nk cell not only about the pathogen 
but when we are talking about any cancer cell also in body if the cell is transformed to a cancer cell then it's the job of these natural killer cells the nk cells to recognize this recognize the cancer cell and kill so how they do how they do they selectively see that if the cell is healthy suppose the b cell is healthy then okay we will not do anything but if the b cell if the b cell is not healthy it is infected then it's the job of the natural killer cells to kill this particular cell then how do they recognize you can see in the picture what is there there is an extension of arm like a handshake they shake hands the when you're talking about shaking hands so the uh, hand one hand of a natural killer is meeting with the hand of a b cell but when the cell is infected then that extension is not there there is nobody to shake the hand then this particular natural killer cell will recognize that yes you are hiding something you are not meeting me as great as gratefully as the other normal cells that means you are infected and now it's my job to kill you and that is the thing what they are doing see these natural killer cells actually recognize the surface receptor actually recognize the surface receptor and this green color receptor is nothing but mhc1 molecule now what is mhc major histocompatibility complex one now there are three types of mhc we'll be talking about so i am talking about right now one and mhc1 is present on every cell type is present on every cell type so natural killer cells will see whether the mhc1 is present or not and if it is present it will bind to it it will recognize it and will leave the cell as such saying that you are healthy but if this particular mhc1 is not there and it is not there only in a certain condition when the cell is infected let's say by virus then they will say there is no one to shake hand or then there is no one to recognize then what they will do they will kill this cell they will kill the cell as well as the pathogen inside it if there is no host the, there will be no no uh, pathogen no host for pathogen to take to hijack and to multiply so what they will do they will secrete the perforin molecules these small molecules are either perforins the peptides which are causing the pores on the membrane or they will secrete an enzyme called as protease which will which will uh, lyse all the protein molecules inside the cell and that's how they perform the killing of this infected cell so that is how the general concept of killer cell is going about but how this process is gone going on how this binding takes place what are the receptors on the nk cells how this receptor binding initiates the release of this perforin and then how these perforins are entering inside the infected cell that we will discuss when we will be talking about the nk cell in detail so this is just an overview just to show you that what are the what are the brigadiers or the generals in our army that we are possessing then next next major major cell type is phagocytes that we had discussed uh, just be that macrophages see phagocyte is a broad umbrella right there are many phagocytic cells and we are talking about a big umbrella under this big umbrella we are talking about three types of cells that can perform the phagocytic function what are those cells see first we will be talking we are talking about macrophages macrophages are what they are derived from monocytes and when they are go, when they are fixed that means they are in the tissue then we are calling them calling it by different different names whether it is kaffer cells or alveolar macrophage that we are talked about or when they are free to roam inside the tissue only then they are called as free macrophages and there are different different types of m1 and m2 that we'll discuss when we'll talk about macrophage then neutrophils we had discussed eos there are another type of cells called as eosinophils now this eosinophils are the cells which are stained with eosin dye which are stained with eosin dye they are very weakly phagocytic cells they actually uh, they actually they are actually responsible for eliminating the parasitic infection when we are talking about the phagocytic activity and also uh, different kinds of bacteria also they are working on then what is happening in phagocyte as we discussed in the case of neutrophil a similar kind of phenomena is happening in the phagocytosis also so what is phagocytosis let me show you a glimpse see what is happening there is a bacteria the bacteria will be taken up by the phagocytic cell in the form of endocytosis 
now how endocytosis is there you can see here there is there is an extension of the membrane this extension is called as pseudopodia this extension is called as pseudopodia but first there has to be the attachment to the pathogen and that attachment is done by the surface receptors after attachment there will be a formation of pseudopodia and then there will be formation of endosome and the particle or the pathogen will be ingested then after ingesting there is a vesicle formed called as phagosome it will fused with the lysosome now lysosome uh, i am saying lysosome because it is budding off from a golgi body and it is containing all the digestive enzymes what digestive enzymes lysozymes and antimicrobial peptides now the it the lysosome will fuse with the phagosome to form phagolysosome once a phagolysosome is formed then the complete digestive enzyme will work on the pathogen and they will degrade the pathogen they will digest the microbe once the microbe is digested and that's what you want to do you want to kill your enemy once it is killed then it is removed from the phagocytic cell and it is cleared from the body that is how the phagocytosis is going about you, so you see there is a pathogen now that pathogen has to be engulfed has to be taken up inside the phagosome to form the phagosome what is happening see every pathogen every pathogen whether it's bacteria whether we are talking about virus they have a, a kind of molecular pattern on it the pattern of proteins that are present on the surface suppose this is the bacteria so a receptor is present here a receptor is present here so there is a pattern that i am recognizing this pattern is unique to this particular bacteria so these are called as molecular patterns molecular patterns and that these molecular patterns are recognized by the by the uh, engulfing phagocytosis so pamps are nothing pamp is nothing but pathogen associated molecular pattern and that surface pattern is recognized by the chemotactic vectors which bring this particular phagocytotic phagocytic cell to the bacteria and then the engulfing starts and then the engulfing starts so that is how the complete process is going about you see after attaching there is a formation of pseudopodia here what pseudopodia is doing the pathogen is here so the membrane is now forming a cup like structure so that they can engulf they can engulf right so it's the appearance of a pseudopodia and then the phagosome is formed and subsequent processes are, is going about now this endocytosis this endocytosis although is can can be done by normal engulfing also but majority of the tissue also have a unique part they have certain receptors which will bind to the bacteria and this receptor will be responsible to take this pathogen inside the cell as in the case of viruses viruses always bind to the receptor as you know fine and majority of the viruses actually bind to the receptors and then the receptor mediated engulfment or endocytosis is happening so that is that is the way that is how the the phagocyte phagocytosis is happening always remember blood it's just monocyte and neutrophils neutrophils is the major phagocytic cells tissue we are talking about macrophages okay then after all these uh, understanding all the players uh, one should be have, have one should have a very clear cut understanding all these players are coordinating properly to give an immune response next line of understanding should be in terms of inflammation should be in terms of inflammation now what is inflammation inflammation is a name given to a collective response it's not a single mediator it's a complete pathway it's a complete path what pathway whenever there is a pathogenic insert where any time where there is a tissue damage fine whether it is whether it is caused by any injury whether it is caused by any pathogen infection the immune system give a very good response in order to remove that invading pathogen and repair the tissue damage when i am talking about the repair there should not be any kind of infection associated to that tissue damage so that wound healing can start so that particular response is called as inflammatory response now inflammation is of two types first is acute another is chronic 
acute inflammation is for a very short time and acute inflammation is required is required is of utmost importance if acute inflammation is not there we will not be able to mount any response but when that inflammation suppose was to be inflammation was to be there for 4 hours but now it has extended to 10 days that is called as chronic inflammation and then chronic inflammation is associated with multiple disorders so there is very fine line i want inflammation but for a short duration of time if longer duration of inflammation is there then it will lead to tissue damage and it will lead to the onset of multiple disorders so the inflammatory responses which are generated by the immune response are are, are elicited by different different carriers like if you're talking about the micro the membrane lipopolysaccharide the lipopolysaccharide which is present on the bacterial membrane is responsible for triggering the inflammation response and that you can see easily in the lab also in tissue culture lab when we are using the raw cells the macrophagic cells you add lipopolysaccharide from outside and you will see that those macrophages are now secreting the pro inflammatory cytokines and that you can measure by the elisa so what is happening see the lps will interact with the surface receptor it will trigger the cell signaling pathway due to those cell signaling pathway the cell will realize oh it's a pathogenic insult now i have to mount an immune response and that is how the inflammation works that is how the inflammation works fine so the when you are talking about inflammation what is the end result what inflammation is doing it is calling all the cells to the site of infection please come it invites all the cells in multiple quantity it the cells and the molecules will be coming to the site of infection fine and then they will seek the pathogen they will digest the pathogen and they will clear the pathogen from the body that is the inflammatory response and that is called a, that is categorized under innate immune system so when we are talking about the history part in first century ad in first century ad i am talking about ad please remember the roman physician celsius was the first one to describe the inflammation so he gave four classical signs of inflammation which are followed till now which are followed till now and those classical sign are inflammation are nothing suppose if somebody slaps you very hard slaps you very hard on a cheek what is happening apart from the emotional drama what is happening physically the zone will be turning red fine the zone will be turning red if the slap is hard the the portion will be swelling also it will be paining and then the heat will be there after slap the area will be very very hot will be heating will be hot so these are the four classical signs of inflammation whenever there is a site of infection at that infection site what you see you see a localized swelling that is called as that he described as tumor then rubo the area will be red then callo callo will be heat in that area and then dolo that is pain the pain in that area now see that is not a response of pathogen it is a response of immune system towards that pathogen the redness is there because the capillaries are vasodilating and there is a high influx of blood there is a high transfer of blood to that localized region because you want to transfer and supply the white blood cells also fine swelling why because in the localized region multiple cells are coming so if multiple cells are coming in the localized region then there will be swelling and if pain why pain is coming see there is a limit to the vasodilation if the vasodilation is going this then it is pressurizing the surface of epithelial cell that's why you are feeling the pain and heat why heat because multiple reactions are there the digestive reactions are going about the release of chemokines are going, going about so in that area the generation or the release of energy is there which is giving you a heat which is giving you heat then in the after the first century in the second century the last mark that is a fifth cardinal sign and today we talk about five hallmarks of inflammation so four was given by uh, celsius and then the last that the fifth mark was given by gallen that if somebody slaps me very hard then this particular area goes goes numb it goes numb why because it has lost the function 
so the fifth sign is loss of function and these are the cardinal signs of inflammation the classical cardinal signs that is swelling redness heat pain and loss of function please remember that please remember that and this is how they represent it and perhaps i love this picture the best picture that represents all the markers so what is happening here you see there is a heat because of the slap the, there is a heat there is redness on the face because of anger there is swelling in the belly and there is pain because of loss of a hand and then there is loss of function you are not able to perform the function so this these are the representation of classical inflammation sign so what are the molecules or what are the processes that is mediating the inflammation first is vasodilation where the vessels vessels veins are actually dilating and after dilating what is happening see there is a capillary this is the tissue infection is here so capillary has dilated so that the maximum blood flow can come now what is the job my wbc wants to cross this barrier from blood they should enter to in the tissue then only they will be able to perform the function and that is given by increased vascular permeability this permeability of the vessel is now increased because of multiple chemo factors uh, cytokines that we are releasing and this increase in the permeability will cause my cells to pass from this barrier and enter inside the tissue then extra vision the leakage of the fluid the leakage of the fluid from the vessel that is called causing the swelling then there are multiple chemical factors that will come into play in causing the inflammation part and that is all that the vasodilation there is increase in diameter of the blood vessel now that increase in diameter diameter is responsible for the redness that is called as erythema always remember the redness that we are talking about is called as erythema and because of the increase in blood vessel because of the increase in blood vessel there will be an increase in temperature also fine then the permeability also has to be increased why because anyhow the cells which you are bringing has to cross the capillary and enter inside the tissue and that is called as influx it is called as influx and always remember one more thing the swelling is called as edema the swelling is called as edema now why the swelling is coming because the fluid is crossing the capillary and is accum accumulating in the localized region now this accumulation inside a localized region is resulting in the bulging or the swelling called as edema and that accumulation of fluid is called as exudate is called as exudate why exudate because it is expelled from the body the fluid which is expelled from the body capillaries is called as exudate and it is localized in its localized form is causing the swelling called as edema and that is how the complete process is going on so this particular figure summarizes what we have read till now see first of all let me tell you what is this this red color is bacteria fine how it is entering i'll tell you this is the skin surface then this is the lower epidermis and other other cells then there is there is a capillary blood capillary which is bringing different different type of cells these are rbcs these are rbcs and these are uh, these are different different types of cells or the cells which are we are required which are required to go to the site of infection fine required to go to the site of infection now these are actually phagocytic cells and organelles so what is happening there was a tissue damage there was a cut that happened there was a piercing that happened so, so there is a tissue damage the moment there is a damage you will see that doctor gives you an antibiotic why antibiotic because he don't want that any kind of pathogen bacteria that is prevailing inside prevailing in the environment should enter inside the body via that cut or via that wound so what is happening bacteria needs to access inside your body and that access is provided by a tissue damage by a skin damage and then bacteria is entering the moment the bacteria is entered the moment the bacteria is entered the tissue damage the cells which are damaging here will release the signaling factors will release the factors chemotactic factors now what those chemotactic factors will be doing they will be signaling the capillary that you have to start performing the inflammation then what happens these capillaries increase in their diameter 
they release the fluid they increase their permeability and release the fluid now these this fluid is nothing but it contains antibody it contains the complement protein it contains the reactive proteins it contains the phagocytic cells which will reach to this particular entry point of bacteria they will reach to this bacteria they will start removing this bacteria from the body and they will clear by again uh, through blood vessel and excretory system so this is how the inflammation is going about this is how the inflammation is going about now the other classical terms that one should talk one should see right so uh, let me show this you yeah see these are phagocytic cells now these phagocytic cells are moving inside the capillary so the flow of blood is in such a manner that these cells always remain at the center of the vessel the 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 flow the flow of the blood ensures that all the phagocytic cells are going at the center they are not going towards the boundary wall the moment a signal comes that yes the infection is there these cells now shift towards the margin or the margin towards the endothelial cells and then they come out and this process of going towards the margin is called as margination and the coming out of the fluid or coming out of the cell is called as extravasation extravasation or diapedesis or diapedesis so always remember the coming out from the capillary coming out from a capillary is extravasation diapedesis and coming from the center of the capillary to the margin of endothelial wall that is called as margination that is called as margination and then there is another term that we regularly hear there is a pus fluid there is a pus fluid at the at the site of infection the pus is filled you have to remove that pus now what is that pus what is that pus see at this particular site suppose the fluid has gone now fluid has performed its function it has destroyed the bacteria now bacteria also destroyed some of our cells so what what all are present here the dead cells the digested bacterial cells the fluid that was secreted now once the macrophages of fluid is secreted it is not taken back right so that accumulation is called as pus that accumulation of dead cells digested material and fluid that is released is called as pus so always remember that these are the classical responses of immune system it's not because of the pathogen yes because of the pathogen the inflammatory responses are there but these are our response to the pathogen in order to clear that microorganism in order to clear that microorganism then at the end what is happening then at the end what is happening here in this picture at the end the last point is to clear this particular pathogen all these things we have discussed but we have left a single part that is this these reactive proteins that are released now what are these reactive proteins we call them as acute phase proteins acute phase proteins called as c reactive proteins or crp in general what are these these are the proteins that are synthesized in liver they are synthesized in liver in response to the tissue damage in response to the tissue damage now why we are why they are called as c reactive proteins c reactive proteins is simply because they recognize the bacteria by a particular mechanism how the bacterial cell wall contains polysaccharides contains polysaccharides it contains a polysaccharide called as c polysaccharide so based on their pattern of recognition based on their pattern of identifying the bacteria it they are named as c reactive protein because they are identifying the they are recognizing the c polysaccharide on the cell wall they are recognizing the c polysaccharide on the cell wall now what they will do they will go and bind on the bacteria they will not do anything they are going and binding to the bacteria but they are binding will help the other cells to recognize where the bacteria is so they are acting as a marker to tag they are acting as a tag that we provide on a bacteria and they, that's why they increase the the part of complement system and then lysis of the cell lysis of the pathogen is performed so that is how these uh, these mediators are working then other mediators are histamines 
histamines are re released in response to tissue injury the the molecule that is released the chemical that is released in response to any tissue injury is called as histamine now this histamine is actually responsible to tell the capillary that you have to increase in diameter the moment that the tissue is damaged histamines will be released the histamines will be going to the blood vessel and then it will cause the increase in diameter it will cause a increase in diameter and similarly there are other proteins called as kinin specifically bradykinin you must have heard the bradykinin now this bradykinin is present inside the blood it is present inside the blood and it is always in inactive form the moment we see that there is increase in diameter the moment we see there is an increase in diameter this particular bradykinin will become active and it will stimulate the pain receptor in the skin this is the molecule this is the molecule which actually stimulates the pain now why pain because if pain is there then your brain will be sensing that a pain is here i have to protect this region if pain is not there you will not realize that immune system is work working in in your body so if pain is there you will be working in order to protect it you will be applying external agents to support your immune system at the site of injury and that particular response is generated by these kinases these pretty kinases so that is these all these are playing crucial role like another example is fibrin that you will be seeing what is fibrin this is involved in blood clot this is involved in blood clot all the fibrin strands will be coming to the site of injury and they will form a form a clot they will form a barrier from barrier at the site of injury till the point the cells are replenished or the tissue is repaired the environment should not be sending any kind of infection to the tissue site or inside the body and that is the job of fibrin molecules or fibrin molecules which is actually forming the clot which is actually forming the clot so we'll be seeing the blood clotting also in detail during the course of fractures so that is all about your first line of defense then second line of defense that we had discussed was uh, adaptive immunity or the acquired immunity now acquired immunity is responsible or it is specific in response to the antigen it may it is slow it takes few days to develop and it is divided into two parts as we described if it is mediated by t cells we call it as cell mediated immune response fine and if it is mediated by b lymphocytes and the antibodies to clear the pathogen then we are calling it as humoral immune response so have a clear cut thought t cells b lymphocytes antibodies clearance of pathogen that is that is humoral response and this humoral response is always happening inside the blood the plasma cells then if we are talking about the macrophages taking the cell digesting presenting on the surface and then the t cells are getting activated that is called as cell mediated immune response that is called as cell mediated immune response and this this is the real time picture of the t cell that is actually present that is actually present inside our body so what is happening the t cells how they will be activated they will recognize the antigen which is presented by the macrophage as we discussed in the later earlier slides the macrophages are presenting the antigen by major histocompatibility complex now they are they have presented the antigen now t cells are roaming they will recognize that something is presented they will go and bind and then they will recognize oh this is uh, this kind of pathogen is there so i have to recognize this pathogen and i have to selectively increase the population of t cells which are specific to this pathogen not to the other pathogen and that is called as clonal propagation that is called as clonal population so cell mediated that is the reason why divided into two parts the primary response where it starts producing the cells which are specific for this particular this particular pathogen it takes several days but once once the infection is clear then next time when there is, when the infection comes there is secondary response now the cells are ready it just have to divide and give the response so that is the reason why secondary response is faster because of the developed memory because of the developed memory whereas when we are talking about the b cell see it's very simple it's very very simple what they are doing see and the antigens are there the pathogens are there b cells will be binding to the pathogen with their receptor 
and then they will digest they will take up the receptor they will take up the pathogen inside and also they will present on msc by presenting on the msc they will activate the t cells also so that cell mediated immune response should start and simultaneously they will release the antibodies they will form plasma cells they will release the antibodies and these antibodies will be clearing up this particular antigen so that is how that is how the b response is happening the blood is having a pathogen t cells are going and binding to the pathogen and then they will form plasma b cells and these plasma b cells are releasing the antibodies see antibodies bind to the antigen but they have to first remember that this is the binding site and this binding site is synthesized in b cells and for synthesizing this binding site he, the b cells need a template so the template is take given by the antigen itself so the cell which has taken up the antigen will process the antigen and using that antigenic profile and proteins this particular antibodies is produced which are specific to the antigen and then they will clear the complex space so that is all about the overview that we had discussed and for your convenience i have given you an option of mcqs also so that you can brush up what you have studied till now and also few few new things that will make you curious in order to read more regarding this topic like uh, for example which of the following is responsible for b cell acti activation whether it is infection or this antibody antigen or allergy you have already saw it's the antigen which is responsible for the b cell activation so like this you can go through the mcqs you can uh, study these mcqs like which cell does not have a direct role in phagocytic cells where that is kupfer cells neutrophils and cure macrophages so you know macrophages are phagocytic neutrophils are phagocytic in blood kupfer cells are phagocytic in liver so the answer will be nk cells answer will be nk cells so for your further reading also i have given you the link and i hope it uh, hope the overview was able to give you a complete picture or a trailer of a picture that is about to come and subsequent lectures that are about to come so thank you very much for your patience listening and wish you a very happy learning thank you